Serving a rich God means that you become rich through that servanthood. And as you keep your faithfulness and you keep your, your focus and your goals intact, you allow your soul to not hinder the harvests of God from overtaking you. Jesus, his blood released electricity financially. His blood released electricity financially. So what that really means is there was a transference of his power, his majesty in the financial realm. Now the blood of Jesus released electricity even in health, in the healing of the body. But there was a wealth electricity coming through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus released a wealth electricity, the life of wealth, the lifestyle of wealth, the lifestyle of abundance. There was an electricity surge of abundance through the blood of Jesus. When the blood of Jesus was shed, all levels of financial miracles was now placed in your bosom. The money mantle was placed in your bosom through the blood of Jesus. The cross of Christ it was a portal of God restoring back the prosperity that you would enjoy and that you'll partake of daily. In Revelation chapter 21, look what the word of God said in verse 21. It says, and the 12 gates, talk about the new Jerusalem, there was 12 pearls. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Now, saints, pearls is an expensive type of material. There's diamonds and pearls. Think about this. This is what the New Jerusalem made out of. 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. And as it were transparent glass, the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Wow. Look at verse 22, and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need. Some of y'all missed that last check, uh, text right there. Verse 22, it said, I saw no temple therein. You know what that means? No synagogues. No church buildings. Let's go, let's go forward. I saw no temple. In the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, in the Gospels, the temple was where they went to worship. The temple was where they went to go do services. It said, I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. That means that they are the church ceremony. They are the conference. They are the meeting. They are the tabernacle. Let's go to verse 23. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. Now, I want to magnify this about the glory of God because there's a glory light for finances that a lot of you are operating. That's why you're able to sow. That's why you're able to honor God. That's why you're able to focus. Because this is a glory light for finances. Now, saints, if there's a glory light for finances, there's also a darkness for finances. And that's why people don't sow. That's why they don't operate in honor because they don't they don't have light. 
Light means that the spirit of God rules your heart, your mentality towards a thing. And so you could hear God about it. You could know God concerning it and you could worship God in the activity of it. So there's a glory of God. There's a glory light for finances. Say, I receive glory light for finances in my soul. I receive glory light for finances in my soul. Now, saints, I've spoken to you about the glory of light, the glory light for healing you from wounds and traumatic situations. The glory light that heals pain within your soul, your soul being damaged. But there's a glory light strictly for finances. Abraham had a glory light in finances. That's why he was very rich. Let's, let's go there real quick. Let's go ahead. Genesis chapter 13. Look what it says right here. This is the glory light for finances moving through Abraham. And see, Abraham had this glory light. That's why he was able to step into God's will in money. God's will in provision. Look, Genesis chapter 12, verse one. And now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Most times when money cometh is in operation, you'll have to disconnect from your father's house. Biological family. <clears throat> I have never met somebody that successfully achieved financial blessing from God correctly and lived in that blessing of Abraham and not disconnect from them. When I say that, I mean that you don't walk their same path. You don't walk their same path. They don't control how you think. They don't make decisions for your life. That's what I mean. And from thy father's house unto a land that I shall show you. Look at verse two. And I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. God promise and fame. And thou shalt be a blessing. And then look what it says, verse three. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse them that curseth thee, and all in thee all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So look, this is financial light that God is promising him. Now let's go to uh, Genesis thirteen two. It says, and Abram was very. As a matter of fact, let's go to Genesis thirteen one. So a Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. Now let's go to verse two. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2 is a financial, uh, financial glory light scripture. It is the glory light of finances. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, we dealing with the glory light of finances. See, Abram, for him to be very rich, that means that the light of God was shining in his soul concerning wealth. This wealth glory was inside of the soul of Abram. Now, if we look at the statistics, what was he required to do? There had to be a separation in conversation and mixing with biological family. If you don't let this happen, you also can't get angry when other people get the riches and you talking about why God not giving it to me. You can't get mad at that because we see the requirement right here. Abram was not mixing with the biological family off of God. God had decided go forth and then look at this financial light that's flowing in his soul. The financial glory light of God was in his soul, but he had to make decisions. He passed 
the requirement test. And so that's how the glory light could flow. The glory light can't flow if you don't stick to the requirements. Then you step into darkness and that's where Satan still will rule your financial future. Even though you're doing certain things that God wants you to do, you're not all the way there. That's why I often told you, saints, when I was coming up and sewing, I wasn't dating. I wasn't sexing. I wasn't texting. I wasn't doing all that stuff that some of y'all be doing. Some of y'all don't understand how you hindering your, your harvest. Because you're not even the time to enjoy that. Some of y'all haven't even finished letting God process you. I mean, what you going to do with a man uh, correct you and all that different type of stuff? I mean, like, it take a lot of death to yourself to be submissive. It take a lot of death to self to be a leader. How are you going to do that as a man? How are you going to operate in leadership if the Holy Spirit not able to rule you today? You think ruling a woman is easy? These women crazy as hell. And some of y'all, you think that woman up there all smile. Hi, I love you. Hi. You, you, you wait till a woman operate like Hulkamania. These women got gorilla strength. You you young brothers in here, you see a woman, you just talking that cute talk with her. Hi, baby. I love you. You're awesome. You're so wonderful. Yeah, you're awesome. You're wonderful. You wait till you give her an instruction. Wait till you give her instruction she don't like. Wait till you tell her to do something she don't want to do and see how she flip out on you. Some of y'all don't know these women. A woman is not her vagina. She is her voice. The highest part of a woman is not her vagina. It is her voice. You want to know a woman? You don't get to know her through her vagina. You get to know her through her voice. What comes out of her mouth? Because that's what's in her heart. You don't, you don't know a woman for long. You don't know a woman. You think that life is not all sex. It's not all sexual. It's intellectual. And women are very different when they feel opposed. When they feel disrespected, women are very different when they feel like they're not having their way. You don't see uh, the scripture where uh, we talk about Samson and Delilah. Delilah went to Samson and said, if you love me, tell me the secret of your strength. She felt even disrespected by the fact that he wasn't telling her the secret of his strength. She felt like that he should. So I want you to see that aspect is an aspect that shows you there's a realm I'm talking to you men in here. There's a realm. You don't, you don't know who women are. Women are very different when they're being trained than when they're being. Uh, I, I want to be real raw. I, I want to say it just how I, I would say it. But when they're being trucked. Women are very different from being, <laughs> from being trained and being trucked. When you're trucking a woman, that's not training. So you don't know who she is. Trucking a woman... And training a woman has two different reactions. But if you want to know who a woman is, start training a woman. And then that's when you know who she is. Who she is manifests in training, not in trucking. Even Abraham, if you look at what Abraham had to do, he had to train his wife. Abraham has Sarai laughing. Now that's different from trucking her. Now he has to train her. The Lord was like, I heard her laugh. Why she laugh? Untrained. Now when he's trucking her, that's different. There's no rebuke there. But when we deal with the pleasure to the presence of God, there's a different thing. Son, I want to tell you something on this line. Those of you are that single, you men that watch me. Don't think that you know a woman because she's sexual. The sexuality of a woman is less than 1% of who she is. Less than 1% of who she is. You got 99 more percent of a woman that you don't know about if you think that you know her sexually. I would advise some of you are on here that while you're single, just remember. God wants to train you prophetically so that you can know how to move. 
when God does give you a woman. Because uh, the word of God talked about this first woman being apprehended by the snake, listening to the snake, doing what the snake said. You have to understand that woman, not just one sided. She got many departments of herself and her sinful nature is a snake. <laughs> Every woman's sinful nature is a snake. And a snake, what does it do? It go against God's instruction. I encourage some of you single men on here, just remember this. You got to recognize the stages in your relationship where you're talking with a woman and a woman and you're talking to her and, and it's just lovey-dovey. You don't know who the hell she is. <laughs> you don't know who a woman is until she's angry, until she's upset, until she's under pressure, until she's stressed out. You don't know who a woman is. Women are very different in their presentation in the dating stage. When you get to the nitty gritty of life, when you get to the nitty gritty of assignment, that's how, that's how you know who a woman is. You'll never know who a woman is until you give her an instruction concerning destiny. You can look at the reaction of a woman to an instruction to know what type of heart she has. Is her heart soft or is it tough? If she got a tough heart, you're in for a long, you're in for a long, long life. If, you, if if the heart of your woman does not fear God's instruction, she's not going to fear you either because you're going to play the part of God towards her. Abraham had to deal with bringing his house underneath subjection to him. If he didn't successfully get Sarah in subjection to him, he wasn't going to have Isaac. And there was going to be a breach in the flow of finances that was scheduled for Abraham. Abraham had to take the leadership role to get that big back Sarai into subjection. If Sarai was going to be big headed, Abraham wasn't going to get there. In life, you have to bring your house underneath subjection. And that's why God, he'll separate you from your ungodly household, which is your biological family. Because by default, you already know they're not going to be in subjection to you because they don't serve the same God. So he'll have you manufacture the type of house you have, even as a woman. When he sanctify you, now you, 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 you really the one uh, manufacturing the house that you live out of. You're not living out of the house of your cousin or oh, your cousin's mindset, your great grandfather's mindset. You got your own and you are pioneering the blessing mentally. If a woman send you a picture of her, 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 her booty, that don't mean that, that don't mean that you are in the flaw of a submissive woman. Some women send you a picture of their booty because they don't want you to see how dumb they is. Some women send you sexual picture because they don't want you to recognize all the other stupid stuff about them. Some women will send you sexual stuff because they don't want you to dive deep and investigate them mentally and see how retarded they is. Son, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm talking to some of you single men on here. I know I got a lot of men that watch me because over 60% over of my viewers are men. So I know you're hearing me. Don't think that sexuality is confirmation of friendship. Don't think sexuality is confirmation of potential. Sexuality is not even 1% of a woman. A woman is... A hundred percent, a million percent mental. Women are thinkers. The brain of a woman is who she is. A woman can operate in sexuality and not even think twice about it. The real woman is a brain. She's a soulish being. Saints, do you find it shocking 
that Samson was trucking the truck out of uh, Delilah. <laughs> that, Saints, Samson, Samson, <laughs> Samson. Samson, Delilah couldn't walk for days. It don't matter. Saints. <laughs> Delilah was actually running from Samson. She she had to take breaks from Samson. Um, it's okay, Samson. Um, Delilah would act like she was on her time just so that she could escape. And, you know, I, th I think it's coming on, Samson. It's, it's coming on, Samson. Samson <laughs> Samson truck the truck <laughs> Samson truck the truckiness out of Delilah and Delilah still was in her cahoots with the Philistines you think that a woman is just sexual it's only 1% of her and even women that think that they're sexual and that's who I am the woman is 100% mental every woman because even there are some women that even in sex, they will be mentally thinking about something so strong that they can't even enjoy the sex because they're mentally somewhere. Those of you all that live past lives, I know all of you all ain't been saved all your life. There, there be times if you have, ever have a boyfriend, you could be in a bad time with your boyfriend and, and, and y'all try to have sexual activities in the back of your mind. You thinking about that last argument, you think about stuff or whatever. I don't want to go there anyway, but anyhow, Samson was trucking the truck out of, <laughs> out of, uh, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Delilah, Miss Delilah and Miss Delilah still didn't have no loyalty. Even though Delilah was experiencing the sexuality of Samson because Samson was full of life. Samson was a young man. Samson, I mean, he was, he, he, he was, he was ready. And, and, uh, <laughs> Delilah still did it because she's mental. Now I, I, I want to say this to you. Samson did believe because he was struck in her that, that built a bond with her. And that wasn't so. I'm talking to you, son. I'm talking to the men of God in my ministry. Because even that sexuality had no leverage. All right. It had no leverage in the relationship between Samson and us. She still was plotting. The men were still outside waiting to take Samson captive. That sex that they was having did not bring any togetherness or oneness. It didn't bring no union. Now, saints, I'm going to tell you something. Delilah was a bad mamma jamma. Her mouth worked. She she was showing uh, Samson what that mouth could do. <laughs> and even though she was showing, showing Samson what that mouth could do, that mouth still was talking to the Philistines. At <laughs> that same mouth that, that had such gracious <laughs> Miss Delilah Miss Delilah had nanoseconds her mouth had a work ethic to it and it still was working against Samson that just show you that woman not a woman 1% is just sexual a hundred percent of a woman is mental because even though her mouth, everything was moving, it still was speaking against Samson. She showed him what her mouth could do, but he didn't know what else her mouth was doing. 
Dear son, when she show you what her mouth could do, you still going to need the Lord to show you what her mouth be doing. <laughs> this is deep. This deep. This is deep. Because saints, we can't say that she was, she, she was, man, Samson, Samson was so gone that he didn't even want to listen to his father. His father was like, Samson, you need to marry a woman from our country. He was like, ah, dad, I dad, I ain't. Dad, I ain't, I ain't, dad, I Dad, you don't understand. Mom never did this for you, dad. Mom never did this for you, dad. You'll never find blum, 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 Delilah like mine. You know, you have never seen this, dad. And she had him as if they was growing together. And they wasn't. They wasn't. See, my goal was never to, uh, at one point, I actually didn't want to uh, engage with women. Because I, I, growing up, I knew that woman was dangerous to a sense, you know. At one point, I, I didn't want to deal with women. But a woman, woman are my destiny. I'm a creator of women. I have women inside my DNA. If I... If I pop one in a woman today, it's gonna to be a baby girl. It's, that's how, that's how that's how I go. I I have woman inside of me. So women are my destiny, and wherever your destiny is, Satan will try to create a detour mentally from. Women are my destiny. The financial anointing often flows on women because they're quicker to receive because women live in their soul, their imagination realm. Men often don't do that until it's just sexual. But women live in their imagination realm. Women live in their imagination realm. Women could see a harvest. She know that her harvest going to come to her mentally. Women live in their imagination realm so strong that the woman with the issue of blood, all she did was talk to Jesus through her imagination. She had never met Jesus. She said, if I just touch. See, she was touching in her imagination. That's deep. I, 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 I know. I know I'm talking. She was having a touching match with Jesus in her mind. And it got her to her miracle while she was touching Jesus mentally. She had never met Jesus. You can't never say the woman at the uh, woman with the issue of blood had went to his conference. She she said, "If I just touch him, this is all mentally. If I just get a couple seconds with Jesus, I'm gonna get what I need." This is what I was waiting for. And this woman, through her mentality, tapped into her wholeness, her wealth. Most times, men their imagination is an ego. A man oftentimes is in the imagination of, I got to show myself. I got to be the big dog. <laughs> I got I to gotta show that I'm Clifford the big red dog. That's, that's how most men operate. I remember one time I uh, there was a young man. I was thinking about him today. It's not somebody that you will know. It was a young man that I secretly, I, I was mentoring him. You will never know who it is. I never brought them to the forefront. And um, the young man had told me, could you pray for me so I could get the job? I said, listen, I don't even have to pray for you. I say you got the job. Just because I say you got the job, you got it. The young man got hired in 48 hours, like uh, going into 72 hours in three days. Got hired, didn't have the credentials, got the job and everything. So the young man was whining and he tells me I left the job saying it ain't nothing I ain't see man I said huh now this is a good paying job they were paying him a lot of money per hour he not qualified it's just the power of God made it happen he not educated for the job they gave him the job it don't even make sense according to statistics documents resume none of that stuff apply he said I left the job he said, I left the job because the, the boss tried me.
He said the boss told him, you better lift up this box because we need the box there by this time. And he, he said, he told the boss, you're not going to talk to me like that. You're not going to try me. In his imagination, his ego is working. I'm, I'm just telling you how most men think. Not all men. All men are not the same. Of course, you know that. You can look at me. But I'm saying in his mentality, his imagination is not in admiration and get for his 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 um his his mentality is in I'm the big dog too. No, you're not. <laughs> That's the big dog that hired you. Saints in life, you gotta recognize when you're not the big dog. And when you're in an environment where you're not the big dog. Saints, that's why even even uh Every king has a king that he has to let be the big dog. Every king has a king that he has to let be the big dog. I'm just showing you, most women are quicker in sowing and receiving the, the wealth anointing because they are quicker in letting God train their imagination in sowing and reaping a harvest. Men don't be seeing the harvest. But women see the harvest. I just gave you the examples with a woman that issue of blood. She saw her harvest. She said, I will be made whole. Most men don't think like that. Most men think about, I need to show that I'm whole. I'm the big dog. But the woman on the other hand is saying, I need to submit here to get this. But the man on the other hand is saying, I'm already this. I don't need nobody. So we just was dealing with how Abraham had to bring his house under these subjection. This had a blessing flow. I want to talk to you, man, real raw in here. If, if your wife or your children are not in submission to you, it will block the blessing. You need to remember this when you are getting older in years and when it does happen. Cause, um, one of the rewards that God gives you uh, when you are sowing, man, is sex. Sex is a is one of the best harvests that God gives to us. So you're gonna have to need, need to know this if you, if you're going you, you you don't want money coming to ever be sabotaged by sabotage. You got sabotage in your life and it gets sabotaged by her because he, God like, nah, 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 I ain't blessing until I see oneness here, until I see my will. So Abraham, he's very rich in cattle, silver, and gold, but he's a man that is letting the spirit subdue him and use him to subdue others. That's the blessing. So saints, I want you to catch this. Abraham he has financial glory light that also gives him wisdom on what God wants and how to stop what God hates the financial glory light it is a commander that has to rise up in you. See, I want you to catch this. Some of y'all missed this. Money cometh to me now. That is me commanding. So the financial anointing is a commander's grace. When financial glory light come on, on the inside of you, you're going to recognize what you need to take authority over in your life. It's a commander's grace. And a commander is very sensitive concerning order. They know what is chaotic. They know what's out of place. Because if you're going to command, you need to know the structure and what to command it to. Remember, when I'm commanding something, I'm taking something that's out of order and bringing it into order. So if Jesus commanded the spirit out with a word, remember, he's commanding something that's out of order, which is the demon spirit inside the person. But then he's bringing it into order, which is the demon spirit out of the out of the person. So that's the commander's grace to recognize what is 
trespassing and what needs to be imparted and what needs to be taken authority over. See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a man, so I'm a ruler. Anybody that don't make it with me is just because they don't, they don't like righteousness. I'm a ruler. I don't, I don't, I will never live as no sissy. I don't live in a two head household. I will never live in a two head household. Either my way or no way. Because the king mindset, God made man over woman and woman over man. Now, uh, and, and uh, uh, God over man rather, and man over woman. And uh, what I want you to see is this, Christ over man, God over Christ. However, Apostle Paul was saying it. He said it like that. Some of you all will look at that and be like, prophet, I don't know about that. Cause you know, I done had some bad men and they don't know how to rule. That's your problem. Cause you've been traumatized by the satanic path. You ever want to know why prophet Joshua Holmes don't got a lot of babies? Cause I'm a rule. I'm a rule. I'm a rule. I, I don't, I don't live in no two, two head household, either my way or no way in it. If you think that you get your way, I'm going to get you in prayer. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to work my powers against you until my way works. That's how I do. That's how I do. I do that in every situation, by the way. I ain't got to shoot you in the foot. I'm going to shoot you in prayer. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have my way. If I got to move you out of the way. That's how I operate. In every situation. Sonship, daughtership. Business ship, kingdom ship, church ship, every, every ship that I operate in, I do it my way. You know why? Because wisdom, it is God infiltrating earth's matters and affairs. When wisdom is there, that means that God is able to have full rule on earth. I only operate in a one way rulership. Abraham was operating like that. Why well, you say prophet? Well, why are you what's the sense of you telling me all this? I'm talking to you about the blessing of Abraham. Abraham operated in a one head household. Abraham didn't let his cousin tell him what to do. He didn't let his biological father tell him what to do. He was the king. He was the God of his house. Abraham had Financial glory light causing him to walk in dominion. And so saints, I'm saying this to you because I'm showing you that there has to be order. It has to be order. There's sometimes even women be like, you know, I wish I had your child. I had your child. No. The devil is a two headed liar. Because when y'all women get children, y'all want to make the children there on TikTok up there pop locking. <laughs> and niggas like, hey, 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 is that my son right there? Nigga up there pop locking. Did, wait, is that, that my son right there? Yeah, yeah that's your son. Saints, everything that I do for now on gonna be written in contracts. Everything that I do gonna be written in contracts. I'm just, just, I'm just letting you know. Everything that I do gonna be written down in a contract. I'ma have somebody sign their name, contract, signing, audit. I'ma have you sign your name. You gonna have to pit, I agree for you to rule. And that's, that's, that's the only way. I'ma pay everything in contract. Saints, I do that with business. I don't let business people decide no contract for me either. I write up my own contracts. I tell them, hey, this is what I'm doing in the contract. This is what you're going to do in the contract. Either you yes or no. I don't, I don't let people write contracts for me, even when I'm doing business. I don't let them write their contract. I write the contract. I say, hey, this is what I'm signing off on. If you want to sign off on that, you go ahead too. If you don't sign off on it, then that's fine. 
but this this is the learned that long time ago. I don't let people write no contract for me because you write you let them write contract for you. They got secret stuff in there. One time, Doctor Murdoch told me somebody went go write a contract, and in the contract, the man had written down in small letters that he was going to own all of Dr. Mike Murdoch's music, ministry, and, and books in a small little statement. And if Dr. Mike Murdoch signed over, that means Dr. Mike Murdoch lose all his wealth. When you write your own contract, ain't nobody can, ain't no, ain't no side swiping. Now, saints, I want you to hear this here. Moved in the riches anointing because he was dedicated to getting God's setup set up. And that was his daily bread. That was his focus. That was his mentality. <laughs> That's what he thought about all the time. He, 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 he thought about he thought about God's set up all the time. So Abraham got into that riches anointing, that financial light, because he was dedicated to God's setup. If you're going to move in that financial light, you'll have to be ready to bring forth order everywhere you set your foot upon now, sometimes the order is different. You'll have to recognize if you live with somebody or something like that, you just don't let them influence you to take your mind down the wrong path. That's the dominion that you walk in. You know what I'm saying? There's a different order and a different subduing. In some environments, you just subdue yourself and you say, my mind ain't going to agree with that. I know I'm living with somebody right now, they're atheists, but I ain't going to be up there reading no atheist books and letting no atheists tell me that God ain't real. I'm just giving you an example. I want you to say this right now. I receive financial glory light into my soul. 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 And saints, when you do that, you're receiving the spirit of God talk to you about things and give you revelation about things so that you could advance in finances. I receive the financial glory light of the Lord in my soul. Now, we dealt with that in a uh, revelation and look what the Lord said that the street of the city was pure gold in revelation chapter 12, verse 21. Now saints, imagine the very thing that you believe God to supply to you. This is what he made the streets of in, in, in the new heaven, new earth in heaven as is today. That very substance that you want, that you desire for God to bring to you is the very thing that he has made heaven of. Think about that. That very same thing. That silver, that gold rather, that high financial dream that you have, he made that a part of the streets in heaven. So think about this. The Lord has all wealth transactions underneath his feet. That's easy for him. The pure gold represent pure money. And this is what God promised to give to you. If you would keep yourself in his word and follow his kingdom system of sowing and reaping. The Lord has made the streets of gold in heaven. And this is the very thing that you believe God to bring miracles to you. Open up doors for you to have, which is gold. So imagine the economy. He steps on his own economy. Even, even God's economy is his foundation, which, which he allows people to walk on in heaven, in eternity. That's how much the money grace of God is prevalent and powerful. 
That's how much glory there is to it. That's how much grace there is to it. Because he has made this a simple thing for him. Your money situation is a simple thing for God. I found that out years ago. That's why I, I started really taking in that financial message of the Lord. Because people often don't focus on it. That's why they don't unlock it. And people out there with their broke self always want to talk about prayer and fast. And we know that they don't pray and fast. Because they got 15 necks and 13 backs and 25 thigh bones. And then they hope they be telling us, oh, I'm fast and pray. Then we got them other folk that look like Snoop Dogg's sister and Snoop Dogg brother. And they up there want to look all skinny and stuff like that, not affecting nothing in the earth. With their financial foolishness. You ask them, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many people have you been able to affect with the financial anointing? And you got zero. So I, I stuck away from those type of people. I let the financial message build up in me. I let the financial message grow up in me. And th that's how you walk in the anointing in the glory realm of finances. You let that message grow up in you. And that's how money keep on flowing to you. And you got to be in a league of your own because when people start hearing about that financial anointing that you have, they're going to come to you, try to divert you from it and try to make it look like it's not godly. And you're going to have to bypass the whole Bible because everybody God made them rich. The blessing of Abraham is flowing on me intensely. The blessing of Abraham is flowing on me intensely. I live in a financial river of favor. I live in financial miracles. I receive the blessing of Abraham sitting on me. I receive financial increase right now in my life. The abundance that Abraham walked in is now on me. And I will see abundance time after time in Jesus name.